Good day, Lisa. How are you? It's a uh, Friday, and I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week. I mean, obviously, it started off um, with our show there a little bit. Carlos, how's it going? And Samantha, how's it going? Samantha Newman. It's the end of the week. Sandy, how are you going, my love? Hopefully, everybody is having a fantastic end of the week. I hear there's a lot of storms going on in Melbourne. Everybody else, be careful. But where I'm at, it looks nice and clear, so it should be it should be all right there. Um, and if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to the official Lunch and Learn, hosted by you, yours truly, uh, Prosper Taruvinga, which happens to be moi. And um, basically, I believe that every single person that's running an online business always trying uh, to look after their family, you know, using, uh, you know, online strategies should be profitable while doing that and also enjoy, um, you know, working in their business. Now, Sandy says, must be time for my cup of tea with Prosper. I hope you had, I had one earlier, but uh, I just finished it. Samantha says, going okay, Prosper, need your motivation, knee hitting a wall. Um... I think I think a lot of people will be going through the same. I mean, the the year is almost um, finished. Um, count the things that you have actually achieved this year. Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself and stop comparing yourself to other people because you might be comparing somebody's um, you know end story, Samantha, to your own beginning. So really, really take stock of where you're at what it is that you really want to achieve for yourself, your family, and your business, and then just go out there and, and get it. You know what I mean? You you, you have to stop comparing yourself uh, to the rest of the other people. All right. So I also believe that if you're going to be in your business there, Samantha, you should be creating for and relating to the people you're going to be demanding money off of. Um, as you can imagine, it takes a lot of time, money, and effort for people to actually even pay attention to you. If you can actually testify, this show has been going on for a whole full year straight. So you can't just expect people to hear about you today and tomorrow. They're already, uh, you know, running, stumbling, and falling all over the place to get your products. You really got to nurture them. You really got to get them to know, like, and trust you. And eventually, Samantha, you will be um, getting getting the numbers that you really, really want. I'm, I'm always more than happy to have a chat with you whenever, um, you know, you're, you're stable there. And if you would appreciate every single day we talk um, about a different uh, pocket of the four step, um, you know, process that I created that is designed to help uh, marketers like yourself, uh, you know, to brand market your services so that your business is profitable and enjoyable. Today, we're going to be dwelling on the content aspect where we're going to be talking about how to engage your audience, how to educate them on what to want, how to actually inspire them to be, do, and have a life that's of a happier existence, and how to position yourself as a person that can, um, you know, help those people and also provide value in the process, all right? So I see Kevin has just tuned in. Mambo VP, my friend, how's it going? Faith, Isan, thank you so much for tuning in. So if you would appreciate every Monday to Friday at 2 p.m. AEST without fail, unless something really, really cool is happening outside the office, I sit around here and discuss with you, um, you know, strategies that can help you earn more money with less struggle. So buckle up, it's going to be an ex an extensive 30 minutes where we are talking about content, like I said, all right? So just tell me, uh, you know, just off the cuff right there, wherever you are right now, what, what, what do you actually gain for being on the internet? What is your reason for coming to the internet? What's the main goal for you to be on the internet right about now? I want you to let me know. Um, if you can type it in the, the comments there, what is the point of you having a social media profile, why are you even on the internet, or why do people go on the internet? Do you know any of the answers to that question? If you can, please just type it in there. I really want to see, um, you know, your level of understanding of the reason why you actually come to the internet. Theodore, thank you so much for tuning in right there. Um, 
Because a lot of people don't quite understand. Uh, Mike, how's it going, my friend? Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, right. We're just asking topic, um, I mean, questions about why do you actually come to the internet? What is the point of you coming to the internet? All right. Now, Samantha says information, sharing my business, connecting with other like-minded people. Uh, Mike says, there's my brother just tuning in. Nice tie. Thank you so much. If you would notice real close, it actually matches the pink stripes of the shirt. Yeah, I did well today. <laughs> Correct stuff, yeah. Now, like what Samantha says, people are coming to the internet to get information and uh, to buy stuff or to actually get um, whatever, you know, content or information that would help them be, do, and have a, a, a life that's of a happier existence. I see Taff is in the house. Thank you so much, my man, for tuning in. All right. So I just paused the question for those that are just tuning in. Why do people come to the internet? I just want you to think about it for a little bit, okay? Is it because people want to watch cat videos on YouTube or is it because they want to chat with their friends on um, Facebook or whatever social media um, platform they might be jumping onto? Of course, let me tell you something. People come to the internet, um, you know, for, for that. But it seems, um, you know, we tend to forget why people are coming to see our stuff, why people are coming uh, to, to contribute to our information. People come to the internet to be entertained to be informed and to buy stuff. Now, Mike says to network, connect with people, sell, acquire info, etc. And like what Tuff says, to be engaged. Exactly. People are coming to the internet to provide information. Uh, I mean, to, to, to get information and to be entertained and to buy stuff. Now, your content, whatever it is, your assets that you're putting out there, are they entertaining people? Are they providing information? Or are they providing a platform where people can actually purchase goods and services that you are selling? All right. So it seems a lot of people don't quite get the gist of why they're actually um, being online themselves and the gist of why they should be getting people to come to their, um, you know, to their to, to, to their platforms. You know, th there's a misconception that if you post something today, it automatically becomes viral or somebody like Charlie or Sunny um, gets to see it instantly. People are busy. People are busy living their lives, you know what I mean? So whatever it is that you're going to be doing out there, make sure you're going to be consistent, make sure you're going to be educational, you're going to be informative, and you're also going to be inspirational. Otherwise, you're just going to be treated as a one-click wonder. And people only come to you if you're going to be providing value and you're actually helping them by actually helping them. Robert Broker, how's it going, my man? So there's a whole big buzzword in the whole digital marketing space and it talks, um, you know, to the tune of content is king. Of course. I mean, somebody like Bill Gates would have said it, um, you know, in his book, Faster Than the Speed of Sound and uh, people like, um, you know, Gary V, uh, you know, probably amplified it and now it's lost, um, you know, the whole context and concept of what content really is online. Content is not noise. Content is not just putting out stuff there and not actually helping your customers uh, be, do, and have. Do you know what I mean? So in the past few years, everybody has just been bombarding, you know, their customers with, um, with, 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 with what they thought was content. It was all, you know, creating noise and assaulting the, the, the senses of our customers, whether it's visual, whether it's audio, um, whether, you know, it's, it's reading, et cetera, et cetera. You know? So as entrepreneurs, we really, really need to understand that that world is now changing. People now have a filter as to what do they consume and how often and how long. All right? So most content that was out there was definitely creating noise. It was just assaulting the, the, the senses of our customers or our consumers, right? Now there's a whole big barrier to entry. And if you're not providing quality content and if you're not providing the, the quantity that satisfies, um, you know, that, 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 that consumer, then you're out of sight. And we all know that out of sight, out of mind. So it's time to really maximize the efforts that we're putting out there to create content that is informative, that is educational, that is inspiring, 
in order for us to help our clients make that decision to purchase goods from from us all right so you need to really simplify the content you're putting out there build the content that actually engages that actually acquires customers from you know the social media platforms that they are and it converts them without them feeling like they're being sold to all right because as we all know people like buying stuff but they hate being sold to all right so you want to i want to usher you into a new era but before that i want to ask you another question all you know say uh, talk about something um you know that happens to us every single day when was the last time you went and watched a movie can you just type in when was the last time you went to the big screen and went and watched a movie uh nicole how's it going my love thanks for tuning in when was the last time you went and watched um a movie at the big screen please Quickly type, it's a Friday, we all want to jump out and, um, you know, start enjoying the weekend. When was the last time you went and um, uh, uh, watched a, uh, a, a movie on the big screen? All right. And I want to also ask, you saw last uh, Star Wars films. Exactly. And Nicole says, <laughs> living legend. Sandy says a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that wasn't long ago, right? And wasn't it the trailer? That, um, you know, you saw, you saw a trailer of that movie and then you were sold already on wanting to invest two hours of your time to go and watch that movie. Because when you're going to watch a movie, this is exactly what happens. You organize with your friend, your relative, your kids, your brother, your father, your sister, whoever you're going to go and sit down with. And then you meet there, maybe 30 minutes before the movie starts. You go in, you buy the popcorn, you wait in a queue. And then after that, you're ushered to your seat, whatever it is. You're walking in a dark room. All of that is part of the experience of going to watch the movie. And then after that, you go in there and then you start watching the previews. Brrr, you know, they're already advertising to you all the other movies that you should come back and watch before you've even watched the one you came to watch in the first place all right so you watch the trailers and you already talk to the person you're with and you're like hey listen sandy hey listen nicole you know what let's come back and watch this movie again you're already sold you don't need to watch the whole two hours of the movie you just need to watch the highlights all right so what if you can actually start creating highlights of what it is that you sell, highlights of what it is that you offer, highlights of what your service or products are so that people just get a gist so that when they then go out there and commit, they already know exactly what it is they're going to be watching or if they're going to be interested in it or not. You know, so welcome to the age of the sales trailer. Most of us have websites that are 500 pages long, videos that are 30 hours long, or, you know, video sales letters that just go on and on and on and on. And we don't take into consideration that the customer or the consumer is running out of time every second we're saying something and not converting them. All right. So I want to I want to start, you know, putting out this whole, um, you know, idea so that you it marinates in your head to start putting out um, what is called a sales trailer. Rebecca, how are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. All right. So you start creating pieces of content that, you know, that that get you closer to your customers. All right, that get you closer and then they get to understand what's happening in your business and then you drive their ambition, you drive, um, you know, you show how incredible your businesses are in small bite-sized pieces of content. You know, would that be a difficult thing for you to start creating? There are a lot of apps, there are a lot of plugins that you can utilize and turn your blogs into videos and you can turn your podcasts into little sound bites so that people can actually get a gist of what it is that you're, um, you know, you, 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 you are, you are going to present to them. You've, you, you've all gone and watched movies, you know, they spend millions and millions of dollars. They have teams and teams of talented people and it takes years to create a movie, but you're only shown three seconds of the reel and then that makes you have the decision. Okay, listen, I'm going to go and watch this movie next year or next week whenever they're going to be showing it. Why can we not do sales trailers for our business so that we can appease the overactive, you know, um, you know, minds of our customers? 
Because right now we do have loads and loads and loads of content sitting on our hard drives or sitting on our YouTube, but people don't get to understand what it is that we do. So there's small pieces of your, your, your profile that you can use as a sales trailer. How many of you are actually utilizing that little introduction part of your Facebook profile to tell them what it is that you do so that people understand who you are and what you stand for? How many people are utilizing the option to have albums, you know, those featured albums on your Facebook profile that you can use to show people and showcase what it is that you do and then they can just choose and pick where to go and how to, um, you know, what story they want to follow. All right. So make it easy for consumers to buy tickets into your movie because we're making it difficult for them to access this information. We are making it harder and harder for them because it's too noisy for them out there. And guess what? Your customers are actually searching for you. Your customers want to hear from you. But if you're going to be making it harder for them to reach you, then what, what, what good is it? And half the time, guess what's happening? We're not even reaching out. We're not even putting out the content. And then we start crying victim and saying people are not buying stuff from us. All right. So we need to realize that it is our duty. It is our call to entertain our customers, to inform them, to motivate them. All right. So that they can then buy move, uh, the tickets to our own movies. You know, it's small things like that, that you can literally start doing today in order to introduce people to who you are and what it is that you do. And guess what? The more you, 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 you are open to people, the lesser they would want to find out more because people would just only, you know, utilize the information that you are telling them. Nobody's going to snoop into your, your high school photos or kids of your little girl when she was ballet practicing. People don't have time for that. Just make it easy for them to see the information of what it is that you do, how you can help them and how they can get in touch with you. You know? These days, it's no longer how much, you know, it's just less is more with digital marketing, but not a lot of us are actually doing the right things in order for people to understand what we do and how we can help them. If you really want to understand what I'm talking about, how minimalism or how less is actually more, I want you to look at this. If I say these words, what does it remind you of? Just do it. Can you type in what these words remind you of? Or what do they make you think of? If I say, just do it, what do, what do they remind you of these words that I just say? Can you please type it in real quick if anybody has understood that? If I say, just do it, what does that those words make you, re, 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 you know, remember? Or what, what do they remind you of? Good on you, Tough. Tough says Nike, all right? And if I say, I'm loving it. Or if I'm saying, um, uh, what, what else is there? Um, I'm loving it. Or um, uh, here's for the game changers or something like that. You know, the standard has already been set from product design, from the messaging, from the way things are being, you know, delivered to people out there. Coca-Cola, deliver happiness or always happy or something happiness like that. Do you know what I mean? All of these, the, that, that whole bold simplicity has changed digital marketing forever. You are there writing 500 pages trying to explain to your customer what it is that they do at Nike. It's just saying, just do it. And your customer already gets it. Do, do you understand where I'm coming with this? You know, so the, the, the most successful and iconic brands of the day, you know, your Apple, your Uber and Nike, like what you're saying and Google, they all market using, um, you know, bold strategies, but they say very little. They don't say much. They don't go on writing pages and pages or doing 30 minute videos like what Prosper does. You know what I mean? Because it's there's, there's certain ways of saying things when you say not so much, but you're saying a whole great deal. So your success is going to be determined about how can you really put out information in the least amount of words possible because your customer right now doesn't have time to listen to the whole sentence. You know? So you want to really look at how can you create massive channels, you know, of advocates, of people that just get something. 
Do you know what I mean? Like I'm really trying to pencil the whole, uh, you know, uh, profitable and enjoyable so that you understand that what profitable and enjoyable is, is, is what you are also aspiring for, etc., etc. So you got to have to figure out how can your brand be easily, instantly recognizable, either with an image or some sort of slogan or a hashtag that instills particular values and, and, it, and it, it warrants a calculable response. All right, there's a lot of noise on the market there, but if somebody just says, just do it, don't you get it? So figure out what is it about your business that you can make so succinct and, and people that get it, get it, because not everyone is your customer, you know? Not everyone is your customer. And guess what? If you're going to be writing pages and 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 somebody stop me, and pages and pages and pages and pages of content, Nobody really reads these days. People just digitally skim through. And I bet that's what you do when you're watching these videos again. You just skip the 15 seconds and hope that at some point I will put in a punchline or whatever it is. You know, you're probably skipping through this video if you're watching this in post-production. Just give us a bit of a like if, if you're actually watching this video at this particular moment. So nobody reads anymore. People are just digitally skimming through. You know, everybody's rushing to get into the future, but they don't know what the future holds in store for them. You, you get what I mean? So, you know, um, you know, I was once told, uh, I think it was, I can't remember who it is. Please forgive me, but I'm just going to butcher this um, statement. You know, it says, pepper is for the heart, right? And then the screen is for the head. But guess what? How many people do actually want to use their, their head and, 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 and get by? Or how many people really do want to be emotionally attached to your content? So the way people are consuming content these days has totally evolved. You want to make sure you make it as easy and as simple for them to, first of all, remember who you are, consume that content and get it. Do you know what I mean? For folks out there are busy trying to run into the future. You know, they want information quick, fast, easy, cheaper, or whatever it is. So if you're going to be creating content that will be remembered or shared, or people would actually want to be a part of it, go in with infographics. Go in with videos. Go in with pictures. You name it. Do you know what I mean? And make sure you are using all the multi-modalities because at the end of the day, you can't complain that people are not seeing your stuff if you're only using one channel. You know? If you're just going to be, you know, a one channel, one click one, do you think people are going to know about you or read about you? People don't simply have, simply don't have the time or the desire to follow, you know, brands anymore. You know, they just want to see what's in it for me. So what you really want to do is start crafting really small slogans or having a brand that is easily recognizable so that it packs in all the content that you have behind the scenes by just reading a simple tagline. Just like I'm really trying to pencil, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And by the time I get that right, I know people would actually understand what I'm trying to say. And Robert says, nope, it may have all started with a single comment. Um, it is so much more now. Abs I, I, I think maybe we've lost each other there, but you get what I mean. People don't have time anymore. And, 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 and people don't, have, you know, succumb to content that requires a hefty investment on their part. So quick bursts that effectively summarize whatever the topic is. And then they get the message across a far more effective than a lengthy, um, you know, um, you know, what do you call it? Document that people don't even have time to read. And Sandy says, that's a great point. Many people will absorb information in many different ways. So appealing to them is the way to go. Absolutely. You know, some people are, you know, active. So if you've got little sound bites that they can listen to while they're on their jog, if you've got a podcast that they can listen to while they're on their jog, if you've got, you, you know what I mean? Because there's no one who can sit and watch this video while they're at the gym. But if you're watching this video while you're at the gym, Brad, just go back home. You're wasting space. You know? 
So you, you know what you want to do? Get to the info real fast. Like right now. If you notice, as soon as I start the video, I already, you know, preempt people what's going to happen and already finish the topic. And now I'm just stretching it. You know, get to the point as soon as you can. Because ain't nobody have time for, you know, to, to figure out what, what you're going to do after. Or what, what, what the outcome is going to be. Jack Talman, thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. Because let me tell you what's happening right now in this day and age. We were all brought up in the, in the era where the episode was a 30-minute episode. All right? So guess what was happening in the 30-minute episode? Somebody was born, and then they went to kindergarten. And then from kindergarten, they went to high school. And then from high school, they went, um, you know, they got engaged. From engaged, they got married. And then they had a kid. And then from having a kid, they, you know, got a job. And then they got fired from that job. Then they retired. And then after they retired, they, um, you know, they, they, they died. And then their grandkids are taking over. All of this in a space of 30-minute episodes plus commercials. So that's why everybody now wants instant gratification. All right? So get to the info fast, like right now, you know what I mean? We all want the information real quick. So if you are crafting a picture, you, we all know that a picture is worth a thousand words. A video could also carry within it a, 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 a thousand sales or a thousand sentences. All right? So when I look at some of my clients' sites or their marketing, you know, 90%, all I see is endless noise. You know, we, we fall into the habit of throwing in so many words to the audience. So much content that we're putting out there that cannot be digested by the audience and make, you know, something that is succinct. You know, and there's very little genuine impact in, in the words that you're writing on the website. Just like I gave an illustration before. If I say I'm loving it right now, what's the first thing that comes to your head? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I just say the words, I'm loving it? You know? So there's a lot of information out there. Yes, content is king. We accept it. But there's a lot of poorly marketed information that is netting minimum attention. What we need is people to see the stuff. Not just for us to pile up, have silos and silos and silos of content. So if you're a digital entrepreneur, you must really get to the point as soon as humanly possible and provide highly relevant and, 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 and deliberate diction as soon as you get somebody's attention. Just like we're speaking to people, the first three seconds that you have, yeah, the first three seconds are to capture that person's attention. The next, the, the, you know, the next 10 seconds is to buy the next 20 seconds and so on. Do you know what I mean? So if you, you spread through, you know, the right channels with the right content, you will be a difference maker. You no longer are contributing to the noise. You're actually now creating an astounding impact. Even with just a few words. Like I keep repeating, if, I, if you hear the words, um, you know, open happiness, what does that remind you of? Just two words, open happiness, can actually create stories within your head. Just do it, three words. You create stories within your head, you already know what it stands for, you already know who it represents. So figure out how you can be known either by a slogan or some sort of logo that just packs everything in so that you are not also contributing to the visual diarrhea that is out there in terms of content. And it's easier for people to spread your message if your message is as simple as, I want your business to be profitable and enjoyable. It's easier to get advocates to spread your message. You know, I would wear a t-shirt that says profitable and enjoyable because it's easier, it's simple, it's impact. You get it. Just do it. You can wear a t-shirt like that. So in this current world of shares, follows, likes, tweets, retweets, whatever it is, just build content that you want to, to want people to consume real quick and fast, quickly share. So if you're creating content for your friends or you want to share it to your followers, you want them to connect emotionally there and there and then quickly share it. 
So say it quickly and say it well. Find out how can you cut through the noise by being consistent with the same very short minimalistic type of words you can say. I mean, content can be exciting as it is, but for you, for it to stand on its own legs, guys, it, it, it's, it essentially has to market itself. You know, so, you know, there's, there's so much out there. Either it has to be good quality or it has to be a good quantity. And remarkable content, we all know it. We, it speaks for itself. And then it creates peer-to-peer -peer endorsements. So make sure that people are really getting what they came to the internet for. People came to the internet to get informed, to get entertained, and also to shop. So are you giving people that opportunity to exercise their rights for being on the internet through your content? Make your message something that is going to be so meaningful that people have an urge to spread it. And especially really important people. Not because they want to help you, but it also makes them look good, feel good, and, 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 and it's helping other people. And then from there, you sit back and you watch your digital marketing ecosystem work for itself. Do you know what I mean? So, like I'm saying, I'm going to be calling these little sales trailers. Like I elaborated a little bit earlier on, when you're going to the movie, you go on the trust of having seen a three second trailer. So why can you not create that so that people can purchase mo uh, tickets to the movie of your own business? You know, so many people want to tell the story around their product features, the advantages, the benefits. Oop -de -da. Nobody cares, bro. So the core of your, 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 your digital story should be, you know, embodied in a really, really short phrase that people can easily remember and easily share. So you want to craft a message that really resonates, engages, and has got impact to your audience emotionally. But you can't do that if you don't understand who you're talking to, by the way. All right? So whatever you're going to be doing over the weekend right now, I really want you to whiteboard your story and, and create and, and, and ask other people what, what it means to them, what you're about to say, the message, the belief, the values, all of those things. And let everything flow from there. And when you come back on Monday, just start sharing it with people and get some sort of feedback. And eventually, you know what will happen? You will start selling the tickets to your movie. And consumers will get the whole story. But then just start with the sales trailer like I was talking about. Yeah? People leave their homes. People leave their whole security and the basis of a two-second movie trailer. Because they trust that whatever they're going to see is going to be good. So you also need a, a sales trailer for your own business. What is it going to be? Mine is I want to make your business profitable and enjoyable. And how are you going to do that? Come and watch my movie. I hope you guys are going to have a fantastic weekend. I really enjoyed creating this video um, in as much as it's something that has also been um, you know, a, a part of how I really want to rebrand and I really want to grow with a whole bunch of you, um, you know, so that when we're out there, we can always high five each other and you can see that, you know what, this person is actually doing well. This person is actually doing, um, whatever it is that we're talking about. And like I said, guys, when you're creating content, make sure you're engaging your audience, you're educating them, you're positioning yourself and you're actually providing value while inspiring people to want more, do more and be more. Otherwise, besides that, otherwise, besides that, you're really not going to get that far. All right. I really, really want you to win, guys. So don't put out content that's confusing your customers out there. At the end of the day, we're here to live. We're here to learn. We're here to contribute. And your content is the part of contribution. I really want to help you out with this part but um obviously like 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 any good thing it has to end thank you so much for tuning in to this show today uh i'm gonna be out um you know spend some time with my girls and um yeah recoup it's the last um it's the first day of the last month um of the year so you know slowly getting into holiday mood we'll see how it's all gonna be going i really really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and if you don't understand what that means 
send me a message. All right. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys.